Right, so pure two differentiation. Okay, we have uh, what's on the spec? Spec. Okay, so nice and easy question. We're going to differentiate. So, how do we differentiate? We bring the power down. So, what's 12 times 5 over 4? 15. And then we take away 1 from the power, so we're left with a quarter. We bring the power down, so we're going to get minus 5 over 9. Take away 1 from the power, which leaves us 1, and then minus 1,000 goes away. So there we have, we've differentiated. Nice, easy, two marks. It says, hence find the coordinates of the stationary point. Now, when you see that word, stationary point, what should you write down? The gradient equals zero. So we know, if it's a stationary point, we know dy by dx equals zero. That's it. Do we have the gradient function? Yes. This now needs to equal zero. So I know that 15 x to the quarter minus 5 over 9x equals 0. Okay, that's what it means. So, here we go. That means that 15x to the quarter equals 5 over 9x. Everyone happy with this? Okay. So, if I... I don't know which way you've done this. It doesn't really matter. What we could do is divide both sides by x. Okay? Or by x by... Personally, it would be better if we divided it by x to the power of a quarter. And then we won't have a negative. So then, if I divide both sides by x to the power of a quarter, I'm going to get 15 equals 5 over 9 x to the power of three quarters. Because we know the indice laws, it's one minus a quarter, yes? When we're dividing, we take away. And then I'm gonna um, divide both sides by five ninths. Okay, so we're gonna get nine times three, which is 27, equals x to the power of three quarters. Yeah? And then how do we now find x? Yeah, we're going to do to the power of four, the cubed root, and then to the power of four. So 27 to the cube root, then to the power of four equals x. 81. So x equals 81. Now it says find the coordinates of the stationary points. What does coordinates mean? Yeah, x, y, right? If I have x, I need to have a coordinate. So if I know that x is 81, where am I going to substitute in x to find y? Exactly. The original equation. So I'm going to substitute 81 into here to find my coordinate of y. So we're going to have 12 times 81 to the power of 5 over 4 minus 5 over 18, lots of 81 squared minus a thousand. When I substitute that in, I get, so then I'm going to have, that's going to give me 93.5, okay? So that, that's how we get the five marks. Make sure you read the question, it wants the coordinates. Now, part C. It says, use the second differential to determine the nature of this stationary point. Okay, so step one, let's double differentiate. So d2y by dx squared equals um, 15 over 4x to the negative 3 quarters minus 5 over 9. So now that we've double differentiated, how are we actually going to find out? So we know there's two ways to do this, don't we? Does, shall I do both ways? So first of all, we need to determine the nature of the stationary point. Right, so the first way, there is a rule. Who remembers the rule? If, when we substitute in y, if this is less than zero, is this a maximum or a minimum? Maximum. And then if it's greater than zero, 
minimum. Okay, so if we substitute in 81, uh, that's what do we get? 15 over 4, lots of 81 to the power of negative 3 over 4, minus 5 over 9. What does that give me? I got negative 0.41. Equals negative 0.41. So therefore, this is a maximum. Now, if I didn't do it this way, how else could I do this? Yeah. X, okay, but would I do the double differential? So what would I put in? Just the differential. So tell me. I'm going to put in 81, aren't I? Yeah. What's one above it? 82. What's one below it? 80. Now, do we have to do the double differential for this? No. We just put this into the gradient, right? So I know when I put in 81, I get zero. So I know my gradient looks like this. This is going to help us with drawing the graph. If the gradient is zero, we're there. Now, if I put in 80 into my differential equation, my gradient function, so I'm going to put in 80 into this one. So 15, lots of 80 to the power of quarter minus 5 over 9. What do we get? Times 81. Uh, 80, sorry. 44.3. Now, 44.3, this is a positive gradient. Positive gradient looks like this, doesn't it? Yeah. Which does that mean this one has yeah. to be negative? That will be negative. So let's substitute an 82 into here, and we should get a negative answer. 44.58. Minus nothing. Yeah, it's 44.57. Minus. Yeah, 0 0.417. And that's a negative gradient, which we know looks like this. So if you think we've made this, this is a maximum. Uh, you guys have got minus 0. You've got 44. You forgot to multiply by E. So there we have our maximum. So there's two different ways to do it. This one's wrong. 0.416. So, oh, you forgot to multiply 0.416 by 80. That's fine. At least we know it's positive. Well done, though. Okay? So, here we have our maximum again. So, you can do it either way. Okay, question number two. 13 mark question. Now, what we'll notice with this one is that we actually have quite a lot happening. Yeah? So... Um, they may assume the formula for the area of a circle and the following formula. So they've actually given us two formulas, okay, which is nice. So they've given us a sphere has this volume and a surface area of this. Okay, looking at this picture, do we have a sphere? No, we have a hemisphere, half. So make sure we know that we're going to be dividing this by two, yeah? Okay. Then, a cylinder of radius r and a height h has a volume this and a curved surface area of this. Perfect. So, it shows a model for a building. The model is made up of three parts. The roof of the model by the curved surface of the hemisphere. The walls are modelled by the curved surface of the circular cylinder. And the floor is modelled by a circular disc. So, when they're saying three parts, they're saying we've got this part the curved surface, and then, like, the bottom, essentially, yeah? Um, the floor is modelled, blah, blah, blah. The model is made of material of negligible thickness, and the walls are perpendicular to the base. It is shown, it is given that the volume of the model is 800. Show that H equals... Right, so if we know the volume, how are we going to work out the volume? So first of all, what is volume of this shape? We're going to have the cylinder, which is pi r squared h, multiplied by, or added to, 4 over 3, pi r cubed, divided by 2. Because we're doing the volume of the cylinder plus half the sphere, right? This is like GCSE. And we know that this equals 800 pi. Okay. 
you're doing the this the and the whole thing. We're doing the volume. 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 So, because it told us in the question it was 800 pi. So first things first. All of them contain a pi, right? Yeah, I can just uh, divide everything by pi. Nice and simple. Then I'm going to have, instead of writing r for my radius, I can have r squared h. Plus, what's 4 over 3 divided by 2? Divided by 2. 2 over 3. And then r cubed equals 800. Now it wants us to write h equals. So all we have to do is rearrange this to get h equals. So 800 minus 2 over 3. Yeah, so r squared h equals 800 minus 2 over 3 r cubed. I now need to divide everything by r squared. So h equals 800 over r squared, then minus 2 over 3 r, because r cubed divided by r squared, etc. Okay, done. We've shown it. Nice, easy two marks. Now it says that show that the surface area of the model is given by. Okay, so surface area. Let's do this. Surface area, so we're going to have of the hemisphere is 4 pi r squared divided by 2. It told us here. Surface area of the curved surface of the cylinder is plus 2 pi r h. And then, right, we have the base, which is circle pi r squared. Now, as you can see, what we've, what we've seen here is that there's no H's involved. So instead of writing H here, what are we going to write? Uh, that. Yes. So we're going to simplify everything. So 4 pi r squared divided by 2 is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r lots of 800 over r squared, I should probably put them all in capital R's now, um, minus 2 over 3 r plus pi r squared. Sorry, r should all be capital by the way. So 2 pi r squared plus pi r squared is 3 pi r squared plus, what's 2 pi r times 800 over r squared? It's going to give me 1. 1,600 pi over r. Yeah, 2 pi r squared plus a pi r squared here. And then 2 pi r t minus 2 over 3 r is going to give me plus, no, minus 4 over 3 pi r squared. So again, I can collect like terms here, yeah? So we're going to have 9 over 3 minus 4 over 3. So I'm going to have 5 over 3 pi r squared plus 1,600 pi over r. This is what the surface area equals. So let's hope that's right. Is it right? Yes. Ah, oh, please remember to have the capital R's. Sorry. Perfect. Right, so there's another three marks. Now, technically, we've had five marks of just rearranging equations and substitution. That's actually really lovely, isn't it? This has got nothing to do with differentiation yet. This is just algebra manipulation. Part C, use calculus to find the value of R to three significant figures for which A is a minimum. Okay. So what is A? A is the surface area. We want to find when A is a minimum. What does that mean? The double differential, differential is greater than zero. So d2y by dx squared is greater than... Yes, however though, we, need to, we don't need to be that complicated. We know that if it's a minimum and maximum, okay, dy by dx, the gradient is zero. So 
let's differentiate this first to find the value of r. So we're going to get 5 over 3 pi plus minus 1,600 r to the minus 2. So this equals 0. Oh, sorry, there's an r here as well. Okay. So now we have 5 over 3 pi r equals... 1,600 over r squared. So I can multiply both sides by r squared. Oh, there's a pi here. Oh, sorry, has this become 10? Sorry, that's a 10, yeah. And there's a pi. So now I can divide both sides by pi. I'm going to get 10 over 3 r cubed equals 1,600. So r cubed equals, what's 1,600 divided by 10 over 3? Four hundred and eighty. Cube root that. 7.829. So then to three significant figures, r equals 7.83. Okay? That is the right answer. Okay, for now for part D, it says prove that this value of R gives a minimum. So what do we need to prove? To prove that we have a minimum, we need to prove that the double differential is greater than zero. Okay, so now if we differentiate A again with respect to R, Okay, so I'm going to differentiate this equation again. Okay, what are we going to get? We're going to get 10 over 3 pi, and the r is going to go, isn't it? Okay, and then we're going to bring this power down, so it's positive 3,200 pi r to the negative 3. Now, what we're going to do is substitute in our value of r, okay, to see is this going to be a positive number. So if we substitute in 10 over 3 pi plus 3,200 pi, 7.83 to the power of negative 3, what is our answer going to be? So we get 31.41, which we know is greater than zero, therefore minimum. Perfect. So now it says find to three significant figures the value of h, which corresponds to this value of r. Okay, so what is h? Is the height that corresponds to this value for r. So do we know what h equals? Okay, so let's substitute in r into here. This is e, isn't it? So we get 800 over 7.83 squared minus 2 thirds of 7.83. Let's see what we get then. This is what h should equal. Which should give us 7.828, etc., which is going to round to 7.83. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is the exact same. It is the exact same. Okay? All right? So, there we have this question. So, here is the full question. Lots of working out. Okay, so these are practicing skills now. 11 marks. Give it a go, and then I will go through it. Okay, so figure five, uh, five shows a design for a water barrel. It is in the shape of a right circular cylinder with a height h and radius r. The barrel has a base but has no lid. Okay, so it's open at the top and is made from material of negligible thickness. The barrel is designed to hold up to 60,000 centimetres cubed of water when full. Show that the total external surface area. Now they've told us it's a lid though. So normally when we do the surface area of a cylinder, we'd have the bottom, the top, and then this part, right? However, we're not going to have the top because it's a lid, isn't it? So what we are going to have is, what is the area of a circle? 
Brilliant. So pi r squared. What's the area of a rectangle? Yeah, base times height. Okay, what is our height, h? But our base is actually the circumference, which is 2 pi r. Okay. So, 2 pi r times height, because that is what our base is. Because remember, this is the circumference of the circle and the height we're already given. So, our surface area is, in fact, pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. This is the surface area of this shape because it doesn't have a lid. If, if it had a lid, remember this would be double here. Oh, sorry, not this one. This one would be 2 pi r squared, yeah? Because we'd have the two circles. So, it says show that the total external surface area of the barrel is given by this formula. Okay? So, the barrel is designed to hold this amount of water. Now, what do we know? If it's holding that amount of water, technically we're talking about volume. So, what is the volume of a cylinder? Pi r squared h okay so now pi r squared h equals sixty thousand, doesn't it now what they've done is they've been a little bit cheeky here we have pi r h right technically pi r squared h if i divide both sides by r that means pi r h equals sixty thousand over r doesn't it Right, so you can see how we're using this to match up. Do we have pi r squared? Yes. Check. Yeah, then pi h r, we've now said is 60,000 over r, but do you remember we've got two lots of that? 120,000 over r. Yeah, so therefore, surface area equals, now it wants you to show that. So I want you to write plus two lots of 60,000 over r, which is therefore... That means that surface area equals pi r squared plus 120,000 over r. Brilliant. It now says, use calculus to find the minimum value of s. Okay, if we're thinking minimum, maximum, what do we know? Right, so remember, we're not worried about the greater than or less than at the minute. If we're talking about minimum maximums, the gradient equals zero. Okay, so we know the gradient equals zero. Okay, when it wants us to justify that we found a minimum, this is when we know that dy by d2y by dx squared is greater than zero. When we're justifying what's the minimum or maximum, that's when we use that. But when we're talking about minimums, maximums, actually the gradient function equals zero. So let's differentiate the surface area then with respect to R. So step one, let's put this in indice form. Um, oh, wait there. So surface area equals pi R squared plus 120,000 R to the power of negative one. Okay, so let's start differentiating this. So I'm going to get 2 pi r minus 120,000 r to the minus 2. Brilliant. So now, this equals 0. So 2 pi r minus 120,000 r to the power of minus 2 equals 0. So 2 pi r equals 120,000 r squared. If I divide both sides by r, we get 2 pi equals 120,000 r. Divide both sides by 120,000. Oh, sorry, guys. Yeah, this is still negative 2. Wait there. Oh, what a silly mistake. This is negative 2. Tell you what, so let's put this over r. Oh, over r squared. Okay, so... So now, times by r squared, sorry. So let's and divide by 2r. So we're going to get r cubed equals 120,000 divided by... 
2 pi. So r equals the cubed root of 60,000 over pi. Because I divided 120 by 2, yeah? So what does my radius equal? Equals 26.73. However, I'll probably keep it... If I click... Okay. I'll probably keep that as answer into my calculator now because it wants a minimum value of the of s so i know that s equals pi lots of our 26.73 squared plus 120,000 divided by r which we know is our 26.26.73 but remember in my calculator i'm actually just going to put ants okay so i'm going to have shift pi times ants squared plus 120,000 divided by amps. This gives me 6,733.98. Three significant figures is 6,730 uh, centimeters squared, because we're dealing with surface area, right? Now, it says that prove, justify that it's a minimum. So, yeah, part C. So part C, I'm going to differentiate this again. Okay. So 2 pi r differentiated is in fact just 2 pi. And then we're going to have plus, plus 240,000. R to the negative 3. Okay, I'm going to substitute in my value for R, which we know is 26.7. So 2 pi plus 24, 3, uh, to the 26.73 to the power of negative 3. So 2 shift pi plus 24,000, oh, sorry, 240,000 times 26.73 to the power of negative 3 is 18.849, etc. This is greater than 0, therefore, minimum. Okay? Nice and easy 11 mark question again. Okay, question four. Figure six shows a solid triangular prism in which AB is 2x and CD equals L. Cross section ABC is an equal lateral triangle. Okay, so I know all of these are then 2x. Yeah, it's equal lateral. All the sides are the same. That means this is also 60 degrees. Okay. Um, the rectangle is horizontal and the vertical. Yeah. So that means that that literally comes straight down like this, yeah? Make a right angle here. Total surface area of the prism is S and the volume is V. Show that S equals this. Okay, so surface area. So if we think about the net of this shape, okay, we have um, the two triangles on the side. We have that bottom triangle that top face, and then that other face, right? So for the surface area, we need to actually work out the area of each one added together, yeah? Now, we know that all of these are the same because they're all on the triangle, right? Which we all know is 2x, yeah? We know that the length is L for all of them. So for these three, we know that we're going to have 2x times L, and we're going to have three of these three rectangles. So this is how we get the 6XL. Okay? So that one's nice and simple. Now, for the triangle, this is where it's a little bit different. So for the triangle, we need the area of the 
triangle. So you could do base times height divided by two. However, we'd have to use Pythagoras for vectors. It wouldn't be quite nice. But do you remember a half, a half AB sine C? Now we know that the angle is 60. Okay, so we're going to have a half lots of 2x times 2x times sine of 60. We're going to have 4x squared times 2, which is 2x squared, times sine 60. Now, I think sine 60 is going to be root 3. Why do I think that? Yes, because it tells us in the question. However, I actually get... I get root 3 over 2. Yes. Which is root 3 over 2. So one triangle is x squared root 3. Now remember, I've got two triangles. One here, one here. You need to multiply this by 2. So therefore, the surface area equals 2. I would probably do more like 2 root 3 x squared plus 6xl. Absolutely amazing. Nice and easy free marks. It says... So, now... No. Uh, guys, sine 60... Equals root 3 over 2. Okay, so one triangle is x squared root 3. However, we have two triangles. Remember surface area? Okay, we already did, so two triangles, one, two. So that's why I multiplied it by two, okay? All right, so now we know that the surface area, 960 equals 2 root 3x squared plus 6xl, okay? Because they've told us that. To show that the volume, so how are we going to find the volume of the shape? The volume is the cross-sectional area which we know is x squared root 3, because we worked out earlier, multiplied by L, the length. Okay? It says show that the volume equals this. When I have a look at this, do I have any Ls here? So I need to rearrange to get L on its own, and then substitute into here. So, 960 minus 2 root 3x squared divided by 6x, 6x equals L. L. So, we can substitute this in. So, V equals x squared root 3 over 6x lots of 960 minus 2 root 3x squared. Technically, you know, so I can cancel the x here because it's outside, it's like a multiple. Yeah, so I'm gonna get root 3 over right, so I'm gonna get 960 root 3 times x. Minus, and then I'm going to have x multiplied by 2, so 2 root 3 times root 3 is going to give us 6 x cubed. This is all divided by 6. 960 divided by 6 is 160 root 3x minus x cubed, which I'm pretty sure is what they wanted us to get. Perfect. Okay? Just to say, there are loads of different ways we could have manipulated this. Some people would have simplified this first and then multiplied through. It's This is all algebra manipulation, okay? I've done a very different way, just something that works easiest. You do what's right for you. Now it says use calculus to find the maximum value. So what do we know? Our gradient function equals zero. If we need to prove it's a maximum later, our gradient function needs to be, uh, sorry, our double differential needs to be 
less than zero. Perfect. So for part C, use calculus to find the maximum value of V. Okay, so we know that V equals 160 root 3x minus x cubed. Let's differentiate V with respect to x. We're going to get 160 root 3 minus 3x squared. So we know that 160 root 3 minus 3x squared equals 0. Okay? So 160 root 3 equals 3x squared. I'm going to divide both sides by 3. Um, and then square root it. Plus or minus the square root of 160 root 3 over 3 equals x. So the square root of that. So root 160 root 3 divided by 3. So, of course, I know I've done plus minus. However, it is going to be a plus because we're dealing with lengths. We're not going to have a negative length or height, are we? It's just out of habit. So then I get x equals positive 9.611, etc. To the nearest integer, x equals 10. Okay, so we now have that x equals 10. The last part is justify the answer. So we need to double differentiate this. D2v over dx squared is going to equal minus 6x. I'm going to substitute in 10. Minus 6 lots of 10 equals minus 60. Minus 60 is less than 0. Therefore, maximum. Perfect. So nice and easy 15 mark question that we've done in under 9 minutes. Okay, so let's go back through the question because it's really tiny. Um, we've shown this, we've shown this, find the maximum value of V. Okay, what have we not done? We found X, didn't we, and rounded it. Did we find V? No, absolute fools. Right then, so once we get X, let's keep it as 9.611. We need to round V to the nearest integer. Sorry, it was just so tiny, we didn't see it, did we? So we're going to get 160 root 3, lots of 9.611, minus... 9.611 all cubed. Well done if you're sat there watching this and you spotted this. Um, 9.611 minus 9.611 cubed. So this gives me a volume of 1775.697. This one to the nearest whole number is 1776. Is it centimetres? Cubed? Yeah, so it's because we could, yeah, centimetres cubed. Brilliant. And then lastly, did we justify it was a maximum? Absolutely. So always go back and read the question to make sure you've done it. It's an easy mistake to do. Okay, question five. So part A, differentiate. Step one, let's rewrite this in index form. So 4x, and now remember this is x is to the power of 1, x to the power of a half. We're multiplying so technically we add them, 3 over 2, plus 48x to the negative a half minus root 8. Okay, so now I can differentiate this. Divide by dx equals uh, 12 over 2, which is 6x to the power of a half, minus... 24x to the minus 3 over 2, and then the yeah, minus 3 over 8 disappears. So there's part A done. Double differentiate. We're going to have 3x uh, plus minus a half plus 36x to the negative 5 over 2. Okay, done. So we've done that. It says use part A to find the exact coordinates of a stationary point. What does that mean? That the gradient equals zero. zero. So for the first one, we have dy by dx equals. So we know that 6x to the half minus 24x to the minus root 3 over 2 equals zero. So 6x to the half equals 24x to the minus 3 over 2. 
okay? Uh, I'm going to multiply both sides by x to the minus 3 over 2. Well, so I'm going to get 6x, a half plus this squared equals 24. So x squared equals 4. So x equals plus or minus 2. Okay. However, it wants the exact coordinates. So now I have x equals 2 and x equals negative 2. It wants coordinates. Okay, I'm going to substitute that into y. So I'm going to put it actually into this one here. So we're going to have y equals 4 lots of 2 to the power of 3 over 2 plus 48 to the power of 2 to the minus a half minus root 8. So y is going to give us a value here. So I get y equals 30 root 2. Now, I'm going to substitute x minus 2, but I'm going to read the question again. It tells me that x is greater than 0. Okay, so I need to reject the negative one, because in the question it tells me that x is greater than 0. Okay, so we need to reject because x is greater than 0. So therefore, our, our coordinate is 2 and 30 root 2. Now what we have to do, the next part of the question says, determine whether the stationary point of C is a maximum or a minimum given reason for your answer. So now that we've double differentiated, I'm going to substitute in 2. Uh, sorry, I've put X. I'm going to substitute in 2 minus a half plus 36 to to the power of minus 5 over 2. When I substitute in 2, I get 6 root 2. Now, 6 root 2 is a positive number. This is greater than 0. We know that if d2y by dx squared is greater than 0, we have a minimum. So because 6 root 2 is greater than 0, we have a minimum. So therefore minimum. Now, 12 marks in four and a half minutes is pretty amazing, isn't it? Okay. Well done, everyone. This is uh, a few differentiation questions for Pure T. Remember to like and subscribe.